Retina 2A. This one's an heirloom, so I'm told. It's got a bit tired. I like the speckly finish on it. It looks like it was sitting somewhere while somebody was painting the ceiling, perhaps. It's absolutely covered in tiny specks of paint all over the front. Not on the top, not on the back, not on the base. Just the front. Must have been sitting on its back. So, what more can we tell about this? Some serious size bumps on the back there. Not much paint left either. That's not uncommon. The leather, quite faded. Nothing dramatic. The focus, very, very stiff. Reluctant to move, doesn't really want to move past that point. I've had a look through the viewfinder. The rangefinder will swing out with the focus ring, but it doesn't pull back to the infinity position. It's gummed up with dried grease. Does the shutter work? Yes, it does. Our film advanced lever is not dropping back into place very well. Shutter does work. That's a bonus. Frame counter works. That's good because those frame counter springs are exceptionally thin on the ground these days. Last time I saw them they were going for about 70 US dollars each or something. Don't want to know about it. So, I better have this apart. See what I can do with it. Right, off with the rewind. That came off easily enough. There's a spacer washer underneath there. That's used if the position of the shaft is such that the knob rubs on the top cover. It's to stop it carving a track into the top cover. The screws and things can go through the cleaner. These parts can't, of course, because the paint would come out if I put them through the ultrasonic. So they'll get cleaned manually. The advance, swing that out to 90 degrees. I see that that screw is slightly scarred. It means that somebody has slipped tightening it up, I would say, by the looks of that mark. That's hardly uncommon. So, a little washer from under the screw, the wavy washer will want that. Some of this can be go through the ultrasonic, some cannot. The number scale obviously cannot because the numbers would just come off. This won't either because the paint would come out of the markings. These two pieces can go through the ultrasonic cleaner. And the advanced lever, that gets cleaned manually. Now, here is our spring or pull. These are inclined to break. You've only got to look at them the wrong way. I'll clean that manually and I'm scared to even breathe on it. Just checking that the latch here works. It does. That's the latch that locks the film advance when it reaches number one, or when the frame counter reaches number one. Back to the top cover. One screw at each end. Chrome plated, very short. If you ever have cause to replace one of them, make sure you use with the original short one at the film advance end. Otherwise, the film advance won't work because there is very little clearance between this cam and that plate. So that's the top cover off. Anything of note? A bit grubby looking. Nothing else important there. Shutter release is the button and its collar that sits on the top, that spacer. It's important to note that and not to lose it. Re film uh, release button and it's spring, I'll put it spring to one side. 
lift out the shutter release shaft, put it spring to one side. There's a collar here. It's important that you don't lose that. And I think I'll start by removing the rangefinder. Screws tight. Very tight. I'll need a better screwdriver. Let's give this one a go. No arguments out of that. The range binder off. The rewind assembly can come off. Three screws. Bit of uh, dust and grit I'm seeing in here. Film advance. Take that spacer off while oh, there's a spacer washer under there. If that's present, make sure you don't lose it. Otherwise you'll end up with real problems trying to get the film advance lever to return to the rest position. Let's lift that gear up. Everything's very sticky. I'll just cock the shutter to pull this out of the way. And that exposes a screw down here that holds that this bracket down. If I can get to it. It's loose. The screw was loose there. There's one at the end here, that's loose. And this one here has a spring on it. I've just released the tension on that spring so it doesn't fly across the room. And the spring I'll put over there. Here's our bracket and the shutter cocking rack. The shutter cocking rack on the Retina 2A or 1A are very robust. There's a spring down in the body here, so I'll just see if I can encourage it. Yep, there it is. Right, let's see if this will come apart. Just lever this up to get it off that squared shaft. And the spring just went flying off to find that. There's that piece. That drive dog. The gear. The ratchet gear. We've got a spring and a small ratchet pinion here. Ratchet uh, lever. Let's get that out. So that pin I'll put aside now. These are two pieces. There's a spacer and the lever. And three screws hold the top of the film advance in place. The bush that holds the shaft. This is all quite sticky with dried out grease. And there's a fair bit of grit in there too for good measure. This is the clutch assembly, if it'll come out for me. The clutch assembly's job is to provide some controlled slippage between the sprocket and the take-up spool. Otherwise you'd end up tearing out the sprocket holes of your film. Right, that's the top of the camera dealt with. At the base of the camera, we need the leather peeled back to at least this point in order to get to the screw that holds the struts mechanism in place. In practice I want to peel it all the way back to here, otherwise you end up with a line in the leather. 
when you go to glue it back. We could do without that. So just take the two screws out of the tripod sockets around. And will the leather behave itself and come up nicely? Well, it's not in a hurry to lift. It appears to be well glued down. Sort of assessing the state of that leather to see how robust it is. I think it's okay, I'll peel it back like this. It seems good. You can hear that sound, that's the fibres of the leather tearing away because the glue layer is sound. It was gluing that leather to the body very well. And the leather looks a bit odd there, it's tearing the, the layer away, it's delaminating. Let me slide underneath that with a scalpel. All right, well I've got that leather peeled back to this point. Now, if we just folded it back here, you'd end up with a crease across it once it was glued. Right back here, there's nothing that you'll notice. So, two brass screws hold this little aluminium shield in place, and that's got a little raised lip on it to stop you bumping the rewind button accidentally. Three screws hold the tripod socket in place. Often those are loose. In this case they seem to be pretty good. Take that off. The rewind button. I'll take that off now. I've got a pair of pliers that are made to do that job. There's not much to grasp on there. button and it's washer the spring I won't I don't put the springs through the ultrasonic cleaner um, they're likely to get lost take that screw out of the sprocket shaft lift the sprocket shaft out the sprocket put that to one side at the base of the camera again. This is the lever that latches the rewind button in place when you click it in and it's released again once you move the film advance lever. So I'll take that spring out, there's our lever Three screws hold the bush in here at the base of the film advance shaft.
with those out, I can lift the film advance shaft out of the camera. There's not much to go wrong with these except they get stressed at the top. There's very little meat left there with that squared end relative to the size of the hole down the middle of it. They get twisted and when they get twisted you have problems with the film advance. Basically, if it's got a twist in it, it means that as you revolve it, one end of it further down here is revolving not quite as far as the piece up the top here. So they come to their various stops at different points and things don't happen that should happen. We'll take the door off here now. It says a hinge pin screw at the base and at the top. And there'll be at least one washer shimming that out to take the rattle out of it. We swing that door forward. Here's a washer there. The bottom of the door. I'll put that over there. And there's another washer, which may or may not have been at the top of the door. We'll have that off. And I'll just check that there are no more washers trapped between there. No, that looks good. So the door. If I stretch that up, I can lift that off over the top. It's got two paper washers here. If they're present, it'll save me replacing them. Those provide a little bit of friction. Here's our door. And the camera is starting to look a little bit more stripped out. Well, there's our take up spool and the metal bush from the base of it, or the metal bush can go through the cleaner. Next I need to remove the shutter and then start disassembling the focus mount. Right, I've got a tool here for undoing this. This is a Belgian tool, a tool that you can no longer get. Every now and then one will turn up second hand on eBay. I think the last one that came up went for about $70 US. Probably a good investment if you're going to do a few of these. Lift off the shutter assembly. And I'll just pop that with its retainer ring to one side. Deal with that separately. Back to the body. This is our coupling link here for the rangefinder. Single screw at the top here, that post couples to the rangefinder. Two on the front here, couples to the inner helical. Those out, and we can lift that out. Now that I don't put through the cleaner because the black paint would go. I have the tedious job of painting it back again. Two screws hold this shroud in. That shroud covers the gear that uh, cocks the shutter. Those screws are chrome brass, fairly easily damaged, not easy to access, take care taking them out. This piece I don't put through the cleaner because the nice green M&X would disappear. <coughs> Excuse me. There's the pinion from the front of the shaft and there's the guide bush. Now the focus here is very stiff. Um, it's sitting at, a, at the infinity position at the moment. I'm going to mark the position of the, the focus scale ring relative to the outer helical. I usually mark that in two places. Where am I? There will do. That shifting like the back door is not shut, it's better. So, all I'm doing is just scribing a line across the 
focus scale ring and the outer helical so I've got an alignment mark I know exactly where to come back to and I usually run one across the top as well two at the base one at the top that gives me my alignment marks and also tells me which way was up when I go to put the focus helical back in the body Remove those four screws. One just fell in, we'll get that back quickly before it gets lost. There's our focus scale ring, and we're done with that for the moment. In here, four black screws hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. Bellows have just fallen back into the body now out of the way. Four large screws here hold the focus mount to the front standard, they're loose, which means that the focus, the whole focus mount would have been loose on the front. Here we go, let's get that off. Recover those four screws. Well, there's the black screws I'm pulling out there at the moment. They're the ones that held the uh, bellows to the back of the front standard. Put those through the washer. We've got four nickel plated screws here that held that focus mount into the front to the front standard. So we have those here. Let's have a look at this focus mount. Six screws hold the retaining ring in place. These six screws are the same size screws as held the focus scale ring to the outer helical. And you want four good ones to do that job. The ones in this position, if the head's a little bit damaged, it will make no difference at all. So there's the retaining ring. And we'll lift the inner and outer helical out of the mount. Try and get it coming straight out. You don't want to bend these arms because it, it's just a nuisance if you do. Right, this, I'm checking this now. I want to extend my alignment marks across it. So normally I want the inner and outer surf surface to be dead level. And that's so I know that when I put it back, That's that's a reference point for me, and it's about there. So my alignment marks. I had two line marks at the base here, so I'll just run those across from the outer helical to the inner helical this time. There was one at the top. It was there. So now I've got my alignment marks, it means I can put the inner and outer helical back together in the correct alignment so that everything will be exactly where it came from when it goes back together. The camera body. I want the struts out, it's held in with four screws. One at the top here, that was a little bit loose. One at the base here. That's loose too. Two in the film cassette chamber. Tight. One here, one's coming loose. Let's see if the other one will, wants to come loose. Otherwise, I'll have to. No, it's coming loose. Of being reluctant, I normally just give that a couple of taps with a hammer and that loosens it up. Right, this can come out. Here's our struts assembly complete. Here's the transfer shaft that carries the action from the cocking rack through to the front of the camera. Here's the bracket that holds that transfer shaft in place. 
is the spacer washer that goes between the struts and the inside of the base of the camera body in the same position as that bracket would have done. And here's the return spring for the shutter release. So the body now is stripped down as far as bodies usually need to be stripped. In this case, I'm going to use this as a demonstration piece to show you how to go about repainting one of these doors. Now the rivets, the doors on these cameras, they're riveted in place. So the practical way to deal with that is to drive out the hinge pin. Don't drill out the rivets and then re-rivet things in place. That's a way of going crazy very, very quickly. Don't do it. The struts here, I'll have a quick look at these, see what sort of a state they're in. Well, they're pretty sticky. Um, they're reasonably straight. A couple of things not quite bent as I'd like them to be, but it's quite good otherwise. So I'll clean that manually. First I want to get this door off, I think. 